All right, welcome back. Hopefully you've been able to get some photos of yourself or download the resources to follow along here. I thought I would point out real quick, here's a couple Photoshop fails. You can Google Photoshop fails and find all kinds of crazy things, but I thought I'd point these two things out to you. Uh, one of which we look at this and obviously he's not lifting this much weight. It could be believable, but if we look into the mirror, obviously it's been Photoshopped. And what about here? We've got this extra hand hanging out on the shoulder here. We've obviously cloned out somebody sitting next to her, but we forgot about the hand. So uh, as we work through this section about Photoshop compositing, make sure you pay attention to the details. And one of the details and one of the skill sets that will help you master this section is your selections. So to get started, go ahead and grab that photo of yourself. And I'm going to just open this random photo I downloaded. I'll do a couple of these photos here that I can show you a couple different selection methods. So depending on the image you're working with, you may or may not have the perfect photo to work with. So here's an example of uh, a couple different tools we can use. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in real quick, holding the command and space. It's a shortcut. I could click on the zoom tool in my tools over here, but I like to work with my move tool selected and then I'll hit space bar to get my hand tool if I need to move around in the image or hold down space bar and command to get my zoom tool. So what I'm doing now is hit the letter W to get my brush, my quick selection tool. It's kind of like a brush and a magic wand at the same time. So this is a great tool if I wanted to quickly brush out. And you'll see with, this, with an image like this, it's basically been gift wrapped to me. It's such a high contrast between the background and the foreground that I almost didn't have to do anything. So with this magic wand, um, selected here. We've got these ants marching around here, this marquee. If I click on this background layer and hit Command J, it will jump cut it to a new layer here. Now I'm going to hold down the Command key and click on this new layer icon to put a layer below. If I just click on the new layer icon, it'll put a new layer above. So I want a new layer below. With my default swatches set over here, I'm going to hit Command Delete Make sure I'm on layer two here, that blank layer. Command delete will fill with whatever is in your background color. So now I can see I've got him cut out here on his own layer, which is fine, that works great. I'm gonna double click on this library image I have over here for this background, and I could easily drag and drop. I'm gonna click with my move tool, drag up towards this tab, hold for a second, come back down, and all of a sudden I've got him in the same photo. I hit Command T to get my free transform tool and I'll drag him up a little bit. So you can see I've got this asset that I could work with. Obviously the selection as we bring it in here, it's not that great. It did miss quite a bit of the details. It's got this glow around it and wouldn't work out so good. I'm gonna delete that layer. But I did wanna show you, here's delete these two layers too. I did wanna show you that with this brush tool we can make a quick selection. The magic wand tool is another one like that as well where I can click once and it'll select similar colors. A better example of that would be on this Schwartz model. So if I click once over here in the gray background it selects, right now I've got my tolerance set to 20, so about a threshold of 20 gets pretty close. If I put this up to say 50 it'll grab a lot more of those details and then I can hold down the shift key to add to that selection. But you'll see real quick, it starts to bleed in and grab a lot more than I want it to. So if I put this tolerance back down to about 20, I'll hit Command-D to deselect. Now I'm going to click once, shift-click again, and just keep shift-clicking until I get most of the selections I wanted to. So there's a lot of ways to work with selections. I don't have to come in and try and select the model. I can select around everything else, then come up to select, inverse. And now I've got the inverse selection, so if I back it out now, it's just selecting him. With that layer selected, I'll hit Command-J to jump cut him to his own layer. I'll click and drag up back to that industrial factory photo. And there we've got him put in there. And you know we could work with this and make it somewhat believable, but again, take a look here. We didn't clip out between his legs or between his hand. So if somebody was really paying attention, they would notice those things, especially like the detail around the hair. We, we missed some things, especially in this dark background. So let's try again. Let's come back over here to this selection tool or to the, uh, I'm sorry, to this image here, we'll, we'll use a different selection tool. Another option we have would be like the lasso tool. So with the letter L, there's a few different lassos we can use. The regular lasso tool is just that. We can draw with our mouse to make the selection, and this is gonna be really tough to get a perfect selection, but if I wanted to, I could zoom in, hold down the Shift key and add to the selection, or hold down the Alt key to remove from the selection, and just work it back and forth until I get it, you know, 
pretty close to what I want it to be. This would obviously take a lot of time, but depending on what you're selecting, sometimes that's a good way to work. I'm going to deselect that. We have the polygon lasso tool, which is a nice quick way to get straight selections. Sometimes that works great for what you need to do. So I'll just make quick selections here. Double click when I'm done and it closes that off. I hit Command D to deselect. And then the magnetic lasso tool, that's another good one where if you have a high contrast image here, if I just start dragging right here and I kind of get it close and I can click along the way where I want it to stick, it's kind of a sticky selection. So even if I wander out just a little bit, it still wants to snap back to that high contrast area. So that might be a good way to work. But let me show you the way that I like to work because here's the deal. You're never going to be gift wrapped an image that's got this much contrast between it. Sometimes you're going to have an image like this, which is a great photo. But what happens if we want to put this person into a new image? Well, if we tried the quick selection tool. It is a quick selection and sometimes it works great. So if I click and drag, it does a pretty good job of grabbing just the images or just the pixels I want. Now if I hold on the Alt key, I can remove or subtract from that selection and it, and it does a pretty good job. If I were to zoom in pretty close, you can see it jumped around a little bit on the hair and uh, you know it forgot this backpack strap. Things that you know most people wouldn't even notice but Sometimes they do, and it depends on the level of complexity you're working with. So I'm just holding down Shift as I click and drag over these rocks here. It grabbed way more than I wanted, so I'm going to hit Alt and drag. So this really is an incredible tool, and sometimes it works really well. It really depends on the image. What I'm going to do is hit the letter V to get my Move tool. And I didn't even jump cut this to a new layer. With the selection, I'm just going to click and drag. And you see my selection, my move tool turns to an icon with the arrow and the scissors, which means I can cut it and actually move it. I'll bring it up to this tab, drop it back into this setting. I'll hit Command-T to free transform and just kind of scale it up a little bit. So uh, not, not a horrible selection. And if we were going to do something else with maybe a dark sky background or a mountain type of a background, Let's see if I already downloaded one of those here. Let's put her in a different setting. I can just click and drag that in here real quick. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. All right, so scale that up a bit. I'm just going to drag this layer below the other one here. And so I could put her into this scene, and we could do some work with the lighting to lighten it up and make it look a little more believable. But the rocks really look good, and because of the detail and all of the color around it, that selection is more than sufficient. Now, here is probably one of the best ways to make a selection, and this is something I would do if I really needed to know that my selection was perfect. So here's an example of an image I used for my client, and I really wanted the image, the selection to be perfect. So what I did is I used the pen tool. Hit the letter P. We'll get our pen tool. Click up here on the top tool options bar and make sure we've got path selected. We won't want to do a shape right now. Let me show what a shape does real quick. If I click on shape, click and drag, it will make a shape and I can change that color up here. So you can play with that later. I'm going to come over here to my paths window, click on that path and delete it because that's not what I'm after right now. All right, now if I come back to my pen tool, the letter P, change this down to path, I can click and drag or just click. Clicking and dragging will make curves, what we call Bezier curves. If I hit Command Return, or if I come over here to Paths and Command click on this icon, I'll get the marching ants again. So this is another way to make a selection, just like the other selections you've seen. But the difference is, with the other selections, it was pretty tough to go back through and refine selections. Here, if I wanted to get really fine, you know, with detailed with this work, I could hit my Caps Lock key, which changes my cursor from the Pen tool to a, uh, a precise cursor. So I can click once, click and drag to get to bend this line, and now wherever I click it'll follow that anchor point and that's my actual path. So it's a little bit of a tricky tool to get used to, but you'll start to see if you can play with this a little bit on your own time and get good at it, you can create incredible, uh, incredibly precise selections. So I'm just gonna rough this one out real quick. I'm just, I'm just clicking real fast just so we can uh, move along in this tutorial here. But uh, what I like about it is I can come in and really, really control exactly in how my, my anchor points land, and I can also move them exactly to where I want them to be. 
So I'm just going to make my selection here. And you can see that I can quickly zip through this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, especially if the size isn't going to be that large. But if you need it to be perfect, you could come back in, hold down the command key, click on any one of these anchor points and move it right to where it needs to be so that way it's pixel perfect. When you're ready, come back, click on that last point you left off on and continue on your way. If at any point you accidentally deselect your path and you can't see it, you can come over to this paths layer, click on that work path, hit the letter P. Let's try that one more time. I'll command click on this end right here. Now I've got my, my pen tool. I'll click and I'm off and running again off that path that I left off on. So uh, hopefully you can see how this could be a really great tool. See, and I didn't catch that curve right there, so I can grab this anchor point and then grab my handle and bend that out a little bit. Click once on that endpoint, click and drag, and now I'm off and running again. So it's a really, really great tool. Things you need to work on here, if I click and drag, it'll bend it. Or I can click once, drag to get my anchor, my handle, and then come back and click again to get a bend. I can come back over it with the Alt key selected and change my curves from a rounded curve to a hard curve. Or I can grab my direct selection tool over here, the letter A, grab those points that I don't want, hit the delete key and delete them. So it's really, really flexible way to make your selections. I'm going to hit the letter P, whoops, hit the letter P real quick and grab that endpoint and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'll come back over and find where I started. And when I hover, I get my pen tool with the circle next to it, meaning I'm closing that path. So now with that selected, I can right click with my pen tool selected and hit make selection, which gives me the option to make a new selection or if I already have a selection, I can subtract from the selection. I'm gonna hit command D. Or I can click on this work path here with the command key selected to get the selection. So now if I wanted to come back to my layers, I can hit Command J to jump cut this to a new layer. And if I bring this over into my, let's see, I could bring it over anywhere I wanted to. Uh, but you can see how we can make selections and they're pixel perfect. So what I want you to do is go ahead and spend some time cutting out your image. Try and get it to where it looks like this here. Let me grab my example real quick. So we've got this guy where he's totally cut out, all the details are removed, and we're ready to work in our new scene. Here's another example where I've gone ahead and actually cut him out completely. So go ahead and do that real quick, get your image cut out, and then we'll dive into the next video.